Okay. Awesome. Um, hi, friends. Uh, my name is Dr. Hansen. I have the pleasure of serving on the board of Artitude, uh, and I'm very excited to uh, introduce Brian Kenny. Go ahead and wave, Brian. Hey. Hi, everybody. Brian was our illustrious artist who put together the largest trans mural in America. And we have the, yes, right behind him. He even is the illustrious artist that put a background together of said mural. <laughs> um, so we're, uh, we have the joy of talking to him this evening. So we're glad you're here. I hope you're ready to um, sit down and have uh, listen to us have a conversation about art and the pandemic and all that joy. Um, Jerome, are you going to be um, doing – we're on live right now on Facebook, right? Yes, you're live. Okay, so then I can look uh, – people, if you if, – if during this conversation you've got a question um, – I'm trying to find out where we are on Facebook. Artitude? On the Artitude yeah. Facebook page. I hope so. I was looking at the event page for the interview. This, oh, I, see me now. I, <laughs> I see me now. Fantastic. Uh, like, <laughs> so what I'm going to do, y'all, is I'm going to try to um, – hi, Deborah. I'm going to try to uh, do double duty here with Brian, have a great interview conversation. And if you all have questions for Brian or me or Artitude, type them away and we'll try to you know, uh, multitask everything. Uh, wow, it's a little weird, just everything going on right now. Okay, cool. Um, so uh, cheers, Brian. Do you have your white claw? Yeah, I have a, I have my white claw, my, uh, my uh, hard seltzer tangerine. All right, let's do it. Cheers, my friend. <laughs> happy Cheers. Harvey Milk's birthday. Yes, happy Harvey Milk's birthday. Happy uh, Stonewall Fifty One. Stonewall Fifty One. <laughs> so um, I thought we would start at the beginning, as uh, Julie Andrews and Sound of Music always says. It's a very good place to start. Um, you were born in Ger Germany, right? Yep. On a, my parents were military, so I was born on a military base in Heidelberg. Uh, my mom was in the Navy. Uh, okay. Who served in your family? Both parents. They were both Army. Yeah, so Amazing. I was like an Army brat. Yeah. That's rare for both parents to be in the military. That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, but my mom, she she wore the combat boots in the family. She like way outranked my dad, so she was the uh, she she was the the ram bet in our family. You know, oh, real kill. <laughs> I love that so much. How long were you in Germany? Uh, just when I was a baby, and then we moved to Tennessee, and then Kansas, and then Colorado, like all over the place. So I don't really remember Germany when I was a baby, but I've been back to Berlin since a few times. So, and I love Berlin. I think it's yeah. amazing. Uh, I was wondering if you were there growing up because a, a lot of your art has a graffiti aspect, and I wondered if the Berlin Wall had any influence on that. Um, but well, I I do I. I do find the German expressionist, the, the German neo-expressionist, really, really interesting. Like, one of my favorite artists is this German artist, Reiner Fetting, um, who was making, you know, work back in the uh, 80s and 90s, uh, kind of right around the fall of the Berlin Wall. Um, another queer artist, Zalome. Um, these are people whose artwork I really like, uh, German, you know, Neue Wild artists. Um, so, yeah, so I, I definitely think there's, there's some energy there. For sure. Um, there's also a, kind of a little Keith Haring a little bit too. I feel like in some of your work, I just saw. No, yeah, uh, definitely. No most people, yeah, most people like come to me for the line drawing. Um, yeah. And yeah, that's it's very just you know I've always done line drawing. It's I love it. You know I love Keith Haring's work. I love like John Procto's work. You know David Hockney's drawings. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, that's. It's really exciting. And so you moved all over as a kid, um, it sounds yeah. like. Yeah, yeah. I lived, uh, I went to like four different high schools and three different middle schools, uh, three different elementaries. So yeah, it was it was a, it was a really kind of uh, mixed experience. I went to two years of music school at Oberlin and then I like quit halfway through. I was studying opera to be an opera singer. Were you really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, halfway through I was like, oh, I don't, I don't know if I want to do this for the rest of my life. I just, you know. I would go to operas and fall asleep. <laughs> I used to have to bring the libretto because I would, you know, it would th that would keep it more interesting. I have a lot of respect for opera and all that, but I think that I like visual art more because you can kind of you can tell your own story. You can talk about what's affecting you now. You can yeah. talk about 
things in the world that you know other people are feeling so and uh you know opera as wonderful it is 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 you know it's often someone else's story from 100 years ago in another language um so i like the kind of you know th there's I think there's a little more connectivity with contemporary art sure. um, than something like uh, opera, but they're both wonderful, you know. So did did any of that um, that travel and your experience in opera has that influenced uh, your art in any way? Um. Yes and no. I've always been an artist. When I you know art class was always my favorite thing. I don't know why I went to music school because I always was an artist. I always was drawing. I used to draw. To stay awake in class um it yeah. was it was i used to you know yeah I, I used to just i have notebooks full of drawings i would you know it, it makes sense i just because my parents were military they weren't uh, really into the arts so i didn't know about like artists making art now i only knew about like you know van gogh or picasso yeah. um i wasn't aware of like the contemporary art world at all until i moved to new york and started meeting other artists and going to galleries and that was like you know drinking the kool-aid i was like oh my god like this is what i wanted like this is this is something you can have a life where you do this you know and it, and uh and i never looked back and it took me 10 years of like waiting tables and go-go dancing and bartending uh and to uh to get to the point where i could you know just just focus on my art so you know and that's where i'm at now and and, and i love it what 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 was the impetus that made you cut the opera cord? Was there some, a moment that just said, "No, this is art is what I'm doing"? Like I had been kind of feeling that way ever since I started school. Um, and then Oberlin's a really kind of interesting college where most people like never finish, and they all come from New York anyway. And a lot of people like end up double degreeing because they can't figure out what they're gonna do. And so I was no different than most students at Oberlin. But um, I took the opportunity to do a lot of theater courses and and um, like improv stuff and and art classes and language classes. And I loved that much more than the work I was doing in the conservatory. Sure. So I was like, all right, well, let me take a semester off and go travel in Europe a bit and see how I feel. So I did that, and I didn't miss the opera at all. So I was like, all right, I can't go back because like. I obviously don't, you know, have the heart for it, and I don't want to like, you know, waste all my parents' money on this like crazy expensive school. Yeah, just to do something I'm not gonna do. So I was like, okay, I'm not going back. So then I started doing real estate. I started doing corporate work, and eventually I found my way to New York. And, uh, and so yeah, I never finished a degree. So if you know, I a part of me would love to finish one just to sure. Say that but I don't think I'd ever go back and finish in, in art. I think I would go back and like finish in like technology or engineering, like something that I could apply to my arts sure. already. Um, you know, something like that, like maybe writing code or yeah. or, you know, or learning how to you know run a business. <laughs> something that would help me, you know, because uh, I've kind of had to just learn everything the hard way myself over the years. But um, but I'm fine with it. It's cool. Yeah. I love. I can't complain. I mean, it, it, it's brought you where you are. And I think, I mean, just, do, you know, stalking you online, getting ready for the interview. I mean, you've got some amazing work out there and incredible experiences. So, like, you know, that's, 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 you are where you are right now. And so that's, that should be applauded. So kudos, man. That's awesome. Thanks. Yeah, it's exciting. I love it. I love it. Yeah, I'm really good. Um, so you've done, um, you've done a few murals all over, right? Yeah. Last year was like the year of the mural. I did, I, I did five. Uh, murals last year. I did one in Boston, and then I um, for like a group show, and that was a like a big giant like kind of line drawing thing uh, for this sh uh, show of queer artists about like craft, like uh, people that kind of make art from unusual materials. Um, so I showed some textile works in this uh, mural there, and then I went to uh, to France after that, and I did a series of murals at the this art institute Villanois that has like a fashion and arts festival every year. Um, so I did some work there and that was a lot of fun because for that project, they were having a group exhibition called Love My Way of, of like queer art. And um, it was held at this old villa that used to belong to uh, the boyfriend of Dior, like the secret boyfriend of Dior. And it's this great, like really cheesy Fellini satiricon place with like, like Scarface, like tons of mirrors and giant bathtubs and like, 
you know, seven different bathrooms. Like, it's just, I imagine this guy had, like, these, like, crazy, you know, wild parties. Yeah, and, for sure. And, you know, very Bacchanalian. And, and so I got to draw on these, like, windows and mirrored walls that were in the garden and stuff. And uh, it was a lot of fun. And, and after that, I came straight to Dallas to do, um, uh, to do this mural. And uh, to be honest, this was the highlight of my year last year. This was the, the most... Uh, the 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 project that I was proud of that 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 was certainly the biggest thing I'd ever done. Um, but it was wonderful because it was it was something that was very much beyond me. It you know the other murals that I did I did two more after the one in Dallas. But every one of those was just you know uh, where I kind of did my own thing and I could make whatever I wanted. Uh, whereas this one this mural that I um, is in Dallas that was really a, a collaborative effort with the community. Um, because when Jerome and Rafik had approached me to do this, you know, they told me we want to do a Stonewall uh, mural that specifically honors um, uh, women of uh, women of color. So, you know, and, and we had all these different designs, but I, you know, not being a transgender person, being cisgender, I wanted to make sure that I didn't, you know, step on any toes or, or not include people because I realized this was a, you know, a, a great opportunity for trans visibility. Um, so, you know, we held meetings, we held public meetings where people came and, and, you know, asked me like, why are you doing this? How come not a, like a local trans artist? And what are you going to do to make sure that, you know, you represent our community? Um, so I, I realized the best way to approach the mural that I did here was really to think of it as a, uh, uh, how, how can I be of service to this community? And, uh, so I put a lot of my own, like, earlier design decisions aside in order to, you know, create this mural that everyone in Dallas and um, a lot of the uh, transgender people that I talked to were happy with. Yeah, it's uh, that's something that we, we talked a little bit briefly about is this idea of identity politics. It's becoming more and more ubiquitous this day and age. And as artists, we've got to be very sensitive to make sure that the art that we create, when it doesn't impact or feature, when it impacts and features communities that we don't necessarily identify with how do we navigate that like and it sounds like you did the right thing by going to the community and getting feedback from them and then shifting and pivoting in order to you know take your beautiful vision and, and your artistic talent and serve the people of dallas so i, I say kudos to you totally. on that too. I mean, you know i think it's something you really want to do because you know this mural isn't outside my bedroom window it's in dallas and it's you know, it's with a community of people that, that you know, are going to live with this. So I felt yeah. like, you know, I, I really had to do that because I didn't want to make it real sure. that people would just want to paint over or ignore. I wanted to do something that, that the community really loved. And I not only that, but I also wanted to, to make a mural that was beautiful enough that people who don't know transgender people or identify as transgender can still enjoy the mural still be like oh that's still like a really beautiful you know woman with flowers in her hair like and pay it no mind i like that like like i i feel good driving by this you know on on the way to my job or whatever and they may not even really know who these people are i mean hopefully they'll look them up but either yeah. way i want them to like feel like oh this is a cool mural like i think this is a good thing and then hopefully they'll you know realize that these are transgender people and they'll Absolutely. be like hey great. you know there's some you know, it's vibrant, it's beautiful, it's diversity, it's, you know, it's nothing to be scared of. Absolutely. So as someone that does a lot of murals, I'm curious as an artistic point of view, what makes a good mural, You do you think? I think what makes a good mural is um, being able to say something kind of simply. I think that with good murals, you don't want to have too much going on. You don't want to try and tell too many different stories at once. I, I think it always helps if you really focus in on, on kind of one big story or one big idea. Um, you know, and I, I make murals in different ways. This mural in Dallas was very different than how I do murals. I don't normally do like kind of a, a, a realism kind of style. I don't really yeah. do portraits. I usually do that kind of, you know, doodly, like glorified doodling line drawing thing. Um, and that's usually what people want. But in this case, I realized that, no, I have to like really focus on these two people. And it's so big that a line drawing is not going to work. I sure. really got to you know, try and flesh these people out. And, you know, luckily, you know, Warhol had taken great pictures of Marsha. So I had like a really good, you know, reference photos for her. Sylvia was a bit different. She was so much harder to paint because, yeah. 
I only had, I wanted her to be looking at the viewer because she was always, you know, Marsh is the one looking up in the clouds and Sylvia's like the really direct one in your face. Yeah, and there are no pictures of her where she's like looking at the camera. She's like camera shy. No one took, you yeah. know, no one took studio portraits of her. So there's only snapshots. So I ended up using um, like a screenshot from the Netflix documentary about her. Yes. Where she, like in a video and she faces the camera and she looks into the camera and I was like, that's it. Awesome. But it's so very and small. Yeah, that I had to like, look up faces of other women like high definition faces of other women Ow. to like make sure that i could get like because when you're painting that big you want to have like a good reference photo you want to be able to like look at the corner of the eye in the picture and then make it match on the wall and if your picture's not if your reference photo is not good enough then you have to kind of like take other photos and and just copy that onto it um so that was a really interesting kind of thing for me like going sure. forward i would love to do more of these kind of queer hero murals around the US. The same idea, a big portrait with quotes. Um, and, you know, going forward, next time I would want to find like really good reference photos. And if they don't exist of the people I'm going to portray, then I would, you know, find as close as I can to someone like them or even sure. have someone pose as them so that when I paint it out, you know, it, it can be, because uh, really once you paint it out, it's all just geometry, it's just matching. You just look at a photo and you just match it on the wall. You look at a photo and you match it on the wall. You know, doing those faces felt like doing makeup. You know, it, it's actually a lot easier than it looks. It's, I, I mean, it, people go, wow, it's so hard, but, but it's just two things. You just have to have the image on the wall in proportionally correct. And right. you do that using a grid or, um, or projector. In this case, I could use a projector because the parking lot was big enough. So I made the drawings, projected the drawings, traced it, and then used photos to like figure out how the details would look. Um, and luckily, it all turned out well. I was so scared because I hadn't done anything like that up until that point. Yeah. And it was very public. You know, people like walking by while I'm doing it, and I'm like. I remember when I first started doing Marsh's face, I was so worried. I was like, oh man, I hope I don't screw this up. Like I have, I've never done like a, you know, realism before. And not only that, but this is like, you know, three stories high. Yeah, so, uh, but huge. it turns out the bigger it is, the easier it is. I actually think it's much harder to do a really good small painting mm -hmm. than to do something big. I feel like when you do it bigger, it gets easier. <laughs> So, so, so to those of you out there who want to do, you know, big murals, like, don't be afraid of it. It's, you know, just like watch YouTube videos. That's what I did, you know, okay. to figure out how you can get stuff up on the wall. And then it's, you know, and then it's really just a matter of like being able to do color matching and, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. So, well, if we have any um, uh, uh, artists out there and patrons that want to support Brian's idea of taking this nationwide, reach out to Brian Kenny, find yeah. him online. I would love to do this in your city and then, yes. like, Preferably, I want to do this in cities that aren't the choir, like not New York or Los yeah. Angeles. San Francisco. I want to, yeah. yeah, I want to go to like Detroit or Cincinnati or, you know, or, uh, you know, St. Louis or, um, or, you know, Utah, like Salt Lake City, places that could really use a giant queer mural. You I know, mean, that's I'm, everywhere, I'm, right? I'm Let's love, be honest. Um, yeah, and support. And there's so many like amazing you know, like uh, queer people that we, the people don't know about, like Bayard Rustin, who worked yes. alongside Martin Luther King, Luther King. you know, Audre Lorde, um, um, famous, you know, Hollywood people, Christian Jorgensen, you know, we have uh, Alan Turing, Oscar Wilde, and, and none of these people have murals, like, oh, no, no. and I would love, I would love, love, love to paint them giant on the walls, so. That's a great idea. Oh, um, mate. <laughs> I've got a, I've got a question. Um, I've got a, quite a few questions, but I, I'll try to, to minimize it. Uh, in terms of uh, commissioning artists, do you have any uh, advice for the proper way to, not the proper way, but the right way to do it so you don't insult? Like, first of all, let's not ask someone to do art for free. Exposure is no longer an okay thing to ask for anymore. But like, right. if, if you're looking to hire, if I'm looking to hire, if somebody watching is looking to commission an artist, how would you suggest they go about doing it so not to offend the artist? Oh, well, I would, you know, first just recommend contact the artist directly. Artists are all available now. They all have Instagrams and Facebook profiles. You know, tell them you're looking for an artist. and. And, you know, figure out what your budget is. If you don't know, think about how much money you want to spend and then Google, like, average price for a mural of such and such size. And you'll find artists that have, you know, different prices. And even I have different prices. You know, for me, it, it all depends um, on who I'm doing the project for. Sure. It's, yeah, it's whether I'll, you know, charge a lot or, or very little, you know. 
you know, if it's something I really believe in, then, you know, I would, I would do it for free or next to free. Um, but if it's, you know, if it's like a business or something, yeah. well, then, you know, this is your chance to pay your bills. Exactly, right? Uh, but yeah, and, and it also, you know, level of complexity. If like, if, if you're a business owner, like figure out how detailed you want it to be. If you want something really gorgeous and rendered and beautiful, it's going to cost two, three times as much as something where someone would come in and do some kind of like abstract, you know, geometric shapes, you know, something that's simpler and easier to execute you know, something that can be done really quickly. So this mural, we raced through it. I mean, it's 2,100 square feet and it was painted in 12 days and it was like long days every yeah. day. Nice. And, and really only, uh, if you look, if you see it, only like a third of it is is actually high detail. Uh, the rest of it's very, very simple. It's just text or the, or the flag. Trans and flag. Uh, honestly, that's, I think that we got, I'm surprised we got as much done in 12 days as we did. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so figure out what your budget is, how, how complex you want it. And then, you know, look around at artists on Instagram, find out what you like and then hit them up. Maybe if they won't do it, maybe they know someone else that they can recommend, but I would absolutely advocate that, you know, businesses or people go out there and commission artists to do murals. You know, I, I think it's, I think it's such a great thing to, you know, beautify your neighborhood or your home and, and also support, support the arts. Um, was this your first time in Dallas coming down here? No, it wasn't. Um, okay. This was, uh, I had been in Dallas earlier in the year to do a project uh, with a dance company with a friend of mine who has a dance company in Dallas called Dark Circles Contemporary oh, Dance. Yeah, Josh Pugh. Pugh. Yeah. So I went to high school with Josh Pugh at one oh, of my wow. high schools in New Mexico. Yeah, we've kept in touch through Facebook, you know, and over the years I became an artist, he became a choreographer mm -hmm. and... Uh, you know, dance uh, impresario, and and uh, we kind of like started talking a couple of years ago. Like, well, maybe we should do something. Cause he's like, I love your art. And I'm like, oh, I love your work. And you know, I'd done designed some invites for him in the past. Oh, cool. Um, so he's like, okay, let's do something. So he's like, I I'm gonna I'm gonna get funding for this. So he finally, you know, got that all squared away, and I came and we created a project together with nine dancers where he choreographed a piece based on our experience in high school together. We were best friends at the time and we were both gay, but none of, but we both weren't out to each other. He was from a, a, a more religious family than I was. Um, so we knew each other was gay. Like we were drawn to each other because we were both queer and we both knew it, but we never like said it out loud. So there was this, always this kind of tension between us about it. And so we explored that in the work. And, you know, who came to that performance but Rafiq from Artitude. And oh. at the time, they were, they were, you know, looking at different artists to invite to do this mural. And at this performance with these dancers, I did a live mural during, like, every performance of the dance thing. There was, like, an eight-by-eight-foot eight wall. And in chalk, I would do a live mural, like, for 20 minutes during the performance. So and cool. that's where Rafiq's gone. He's like, oh, I love that. Do you want to do that in Dallas? So originally, I was going to do this line drawing thing. But after several meetings and talking with people, we realized that wasn't really going to work. Like, this needed to be a big profile of these two people. I love so, that. So I was like, fine, let's do it, and I'll, I'll figure it out. And uh, luckily, you know, everything came together really beautifully, better than I expected. And, uh, you know, I'm inspired. I hope to do more of these. You know, I think it would be great. Um, we're approaching 30 minutes. I have a few more questions. How long do we have you, Brian? As long as you want. Fine. Oh, slow down. I, I mean, got a drink, girl. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, um, I think it would be uh, very uh, uh, a misstep if we didn't talk about the current times that we're in. I know it's on everyone's mind. Yeah. I oh know. My God. <laughs> but I guess in term, I, I'm looking at it. I'm, I'm more curious about it through your lens, you know, and especially as someone who's living in New York. I mean, that is a hotbed of what's happening right now. Like, how are you surviving? Are you thriving? What are you doing as an artist to get by on a day by day scenario? Well, for the first two months, I quarantined at home until I went bananas and started going back to my studio. My studio is three and a half miles away. I used to always like take an Uber or the subway there. I stopped taking the subway mid-March when everything started going crazy um, and just stayed at home. But after two months, I was like, I got to get out of the house. <laughs> yeah. Too much, you know, being around the boyfriend too much, too much like chilling in bed. I was... So I just started um, walking the three and a half miles or riding my bike down there. Oh, wow. and, and then I was like, you know what? This is perfect because yeah. the gyms are closed and I'm not the type who can work out at home. I just, I'm not a, I'm not a Peloton girl. And so I was like, hey, this is my, 
built-in exercise, you know, this walk or this city biking. Um, so, so now I'm really into it. Now I just go back to the studio, and and so I feel really grateful that I can kind of resume my artwork. I did have a, a solo show that was supposed to happen in April in Richmond, along with another mural, because I, of course, I was, you know, anytime I get asked to do a project now, I'm like, hey, I want to do a mural. <laughs> It found me a wall in Richmond, and I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna do a mural as soon as you know as soon as I can get down there. I'll do another queer hero. Um, Wait, are you really doing a queer hero in Richmond? Is that the, is... of, like commissions got canceled, yeah. um, and then when they made it legal for artists like self-employed people or gig workers to sign up for unemployment, I was like, okay, yeah, I'll do that because like everything got stopped. So. Um, so I feel really lucky because kind of everything's okay. The city's really quiet. Um, luckily, I, I don't know any friends or family members who've, who've been affected by this uh, directly. I have a lot of friends who work in healthcare, so I've, I've heard from people working in, in hospitals and whatnot. But, um, you know, luckily my boyfriend and I have been healthy. Uh, the weird thing is, is that he went and got an antibodies test and it came back positive for antibodies. So I was like, well, then I must you know yeah, be positive right? like we've like exchanging fluids you know for the last four years so i get the antibody test and a mine come back negative so like i don't i don't even i don't even know what to think about that because none of the possibilities make sense it's like if yeah. it's positive then if it's negative then that means either the test was wrong which i don't think it was or i'm immune like i'm just never gonna get it but i don't think that's possible or you know i haven't like gotten it yet but that doesn't seem right either because i've been sleeping so next to a friend who apparently has gone through it that's fascinating so I, uh, I don't know what to think you know i'm just trying to like keep making art and just look at the day that's in front of me because i don't know where this is going and the yeah. more i think about it, the stress doubt i get about it so you know, I just, I just have, I just have my white claw. <laughs> I just make my get out of here. Get out of here. So you start seeing white claw murals all over. Oh ah, God! Are, you know, it's like I live for art making. I really do. It's like it's art therapy. It's yeah. you know, it's I, it's it's how I meditate. It's how I like, you know, chill out and all that. I love it. Is there a piece of art that has been resonating with you during this pandemic, or that's speaking to you at all? Um, yeah, there's this one artist, a friend of mine, uh, Scooter LaForge, who's who's making really beautiful paintings about uh, kind of quarantine and, and this and that. And then also um, my one of my best friends, also an artist, Geo Black Peter, um, he has a studio down the hall from me. He's making some also some really beautiful paintings that kind of in, involve feelings he's having at this moment. Um, we've been kind of social distance because uh, we sure. have a big like, kind of roof deck that we're able to like you know vent and everything and talk and so we've been making collaborative like planters you know like he found a cane in the street and I have all these like water jugs that I didn't want to throw away so we're like oh let's just you know make planters and buy flowers and cheer ourselves up so that's what we've been doing. Um, uh, Scott Hart who's been watching asks uh, where do you draw your artistic inspiration from? Um, I, it, you know, I, for me, it's a stream of consciousness kind of thing. Like I never know what I'm going to do until I do it. I just start doing something. Um, I, I'm definitely drawn to, you know, figuration of, of, uh, of, of the male body of animals, um, in particular, uh, there's certain symbols that I like to use over and over, but, and, you know, mostly I just like to draw people, just, you know, different people in different positions. You know, a new thing for me now is figuring out backgrounds. Like, that's something I'm not really used to doing. Usually all my drawings are, like, people and stuff in space. Oh, gotcha. And, and uh, now I'm like, let's put them in a room. Okay, what's the French? Okay, what are the plans going to be? Da, 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 da. So, like, that's kind of a new uh, avenue for me. I think as I get older, things will become more and more painterly. Interesting. Um, yeah, yeah. I would hope so. I don't want to really stay in one spot too long yeah. forever. That gets boring. Yeah, totally. You want to <laughs> yeah. always be evolving and growing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the fun thing about making art is that it's like it's newness. You know, it's yeah. it's like it's a fetish of novelty. It's it's Ooh. it's always fun to try and That's come up with something phrase. new and beautiful. So I would you know hate it if I got stuck doing the same thing over and over. Yeah. So you know, like I got an Oculus recently because I'm like really into trying to figure out how to do 
you know, VR and augmented reality things, because I, I think that that market is only going to grow. Yeah, the digital absolutely. market, I'm getting asked to do more and more digital work. Yep. And I'm doing more and more like digital based commissions. So I'm super excited about the prospects of, you know, going on VR and designing something that can then be 3D printed or, or creating, having like an exhibition where you can have an element that also includes augmented reality, like hidden artworks that you see through your phone or something. Um, is there, I'm curious about, uh, these are questions that I've kind of been formulating uh, for artists in general, in terms of, uh, especially for you as a, as a visual artist, you, you create pieces um, and murals and stuff, but you have physical representations of your art Mm -hmm. um, I'm curious if there is uh, a piece of art that you've created that you wish would get more attention. <sighs> that I wish would get more attention. You know, I, I, I've never really thought about that before. That's an interesting question. I mean, I don't. I try not to think about what, you know, I got this good advice early on from this uh, German artist, Reiner Fetting, who told me, you know, don't think about who's going to see the work or where it's going to go or what's going to happen to it. Just focus on the work, you know, and yeah. everything will, will fall into place. Um, so when I start work, I'm never thinking about like, oh, what's it going to do? And, and I, oh, I wish it did better. I do think that about Instagram posts. And I think it's because they, 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 you know, there's likes and comments and insights and statistics and everything. So, like, I'll, sure. you know, some people post something and it won't do on it. Like, that should have done better. These bitches don't know what they're getting. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. You know, it's like, obviously, Instagram is a skin show, you know, so it the more the better. Yeah, I know. So, it would probably help if I was, like, pose, you know, top sure, of this with a white claw. But, yeah, sometimes I, I just... I just don't want to, so I'll just I'll just post the art, um, and then it's just people just kind of skip through it because they're looking for more skin. But that's okay. That's okay. Whatever. That's okay. Totally. You know, to each their own. Yeah. Um, I think that's great that uh, you you got that advice early on. The idea that you know focusing on the piece and letting that unfold itself. I just as an artist myself, I, you know, there's insecurities abound in our world, so it's just like you, oh, know, totally. you can't let them stop you. So many sure. people don't make art because they're like, I don't know what to make, or uh, what's it gonna go, or you know, and, and you have to ignore all that, like, or I don't know what I'm doing, or I've never done it. Like, I do stuff I don't know how to do all the time. I mean, this mural was one of them. I was yeah. like, I never painted a face and skin, like I, you know, but it's not hard. You can Google it. It's like there's there's a way to do it, and if you need to do it, you will figure it out. Right and and yeah, yeah, yeah. So you just have to ignore that like whole like, well, who do you think you are? Like, you know, that so, voice is in everybody. And you everybody. Be like, if you have nothing nice to say, come sit next to me. All right, let me get you a drink. Slow down, <laughs> steel magnolias. <laughs> uh, so I feel like <laughs> drink your juice, drink your juice, Brian. Drink your juice. <laughs> um, the, because of that very wise answer about. Um, not focusing on what people feel about the art. Um, this next question might be moot, but I guess on the flip side of the question that I just asked, I wonder if there's a piece of yours that you're surprised gets a lot of attention. Like you, you created something and then people responded to it in a way that you weren't expecting. Um, yeah, that'll happen sometimes. Sometimes like I'll, I'll make some drawings that I don't think are very interesting and people will really, really like it. Like I did this one drawing on the page of a Gay Letter magazine, where they had taken um, Polaroids, the boys that they had, had to come for casting for their photo shoots, and they just posted like a grid of them. And so I was just like doodling one day, just like mindlessly, and I, I drew like bodies coming out and touching each other. And people went nuts over that. They still go nuts over it. Like on you know on, on Tumblr, it's it's just doing better than everything, and it surprises me because it was very like blah 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 blah, you know, like making notes in class. Sure. But um. But, you know, some people really, and it's funny because I've learned to not really judge my own work or try and be insecure because you never know what people are going to like. You know, I'll have uh, collectors come for studio visits and I'll, you know, show them the things I think are really good. And then they're like, what about that one? I'm like, that one? And they're like, I want that one. And I'm like, okay, take it. I don't like it. You know, so, up I mean, the price a little have, bit. Yeah, or I'll make a work and then, like, I don't really think much think, you know, about it. But a couple years later, I'll love it and vice versa. I'll make a work I think it's so good. Three years later, I'm like, it's garbage, you know. So, 
I value and beauty. I mean, they're all like kind of subjective things. You know, everyone develops their own taste. I just, I just think people should just have art on the walls. You know, you, most people don't have anything on their walls, and that's so sad. It is sad for sure. Um, we're going to wrap up in just a little bit. I want to uh, honor and respect your time, which I'm so grateful for, Brian. Um, oh, no, my pleasure. It's always, it's always fun to talk about art. <laughs> Um, friends, I don't know if you've noticed that there's uh, a way to donate to Artitude. So I hope that you will keep us in mind and donate so that we can continue to create amazing art um, in Dallas. Uh, I also, it would be also behoove of me to say that as this mural that we're talking about is a trans mural, we should also be giving space to uh, nonprofits that support and work for the trans community in the DFW Metroplex. So as you think about donating to Artitude, please also consider donating to Transcendence. Uh, they're based in Fort Worth, and they've been serving the uh, transgender community in Dallas and uh, Fort Worth for uh, a few years here. And we worked with them as well, created this mural. So uh, they give generously. Love. They still need our love. I mean, yep. the day this mural was finished, a trans person was killed in Dallas. I mean, it's like it's still happening. It's, yep. you know, it's not over. <laughs> so give money where you can, give to Artitude, give to Transcendence, and give generously so that we can create bringing amazing murals uh, to Dallas. Yeah, um, buy art, make art, you yes. know, be art. Yeah, be art. art. Yes, Absolutely. yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to um, – uh, so before we go, I want to channel a little Harvey Milk. It's Harvey Milk's birthday today. Okay. And uh, Harvey Milk always said you got to give him hope. So if you all will bear with me, I'd like you to uh, you all to close your eyes, take some deep breaths, um, and as you de breathe deeply, I'm going to share some comments that Dallas has shared with us about the mural. And uh, it's my hope, uh, pun intended, that as you breathe deeply and you hear these words, um, that you will leave this interview full of hope as well. So close your eyes, take some deep breaths. Um, Crystal Bloomer says that the mural represents community. It represents surviving and thriving as a community and coming together to celebrate our elders that set the stage for us to survive and thrive as a community. Rebecca Ortega says, it's a beautiful piece and Oaklawn is so lucky to have it. Finn Jones shares, the mural is a testament to the struggles and victories of the transgender community through the generations. The women portrayed on this wall risked everything so that I may be able to live as my true self in a world that tries to define who I must be. Amen. So um, I want to thank you, Brian, for the time um, and for all the amazing work that you did to bring the largest trans mural to Dallas. Um, personally, for me, as a gay man walking through the neighborhood, I see that... Um, Anytime I walk in the neighborhood and it brings me so much joy to oh, know that uh, we have this here and that people walk by and can see these heroes of the past. Uh, yeah, celebrating. Let's, let's, you know, let's not stop there. I hope yeah. that, you know, Dallas, the attitude will bring more artists forth to, you know, glorify the walls with our, with our, with our heroes and our queer energy. And, yeah. you know, I hope to do the same. I hope to also continue to be of service to, our people and uh, and you know just keep shining that light. Absolutely, I think that's definitely in your future for sure. Um, where can people find you and follow you, Brian? Uh, you can find me. I'm mostly on Instagram. That's Brian Kenny Kenny with three N's. Um, or uh, you can visit me on my website. It's BrianKenny.work. And uh, you can shoot me a message on either if you ever have a question. Uh, I'll be happy to talk. Awesome. And you mentioned Richmond. Is there anything else coming up in the future? I know the future is a day-by-day -day scenario right now, but yeah, is there I have something... a really big fashion collaboration. I can't really announce it yet, but it's something super, super cool uh, that's coming out. A bunch of clothes and cool things. Oh, awesome! Um, that's fall. There's another queer mural in Richmond coming this fall. Um, hopefully, one of the viewers out here will, uh, you know, have a wall they can uh, invite me to, and I can come do one in their city. For sure. So yeah. So, um, Definitely follow Brian Kenny so that you can stay abreast of this exciting collaboration that he and won't share with us right now. Yep. But that's okay. I won't. I won't try to force it out of him. Drink another white claw and tell me. All right. 
Um, th uh, friends, uh, Artitude also has some exciting things coming up. We have uh, what we're calling, well, I don't know if I want to share it either. So just follow Artitude too. We've got some exciting things coming up for Pride. Like us and follow that there because we really want to collaborate with all of DFW on a project to celebrate Pride during this pandemic. So um, Brian, I can't thank you enough for all your talent and your time today. We love you. Thank you for being with us today. And um, I hope you stay safe and sane in New York right now. Uh, thank you so much. I love you guys too. It was a pleasure to be here. Stay safe and healthy, everybody. Yeah. Take okay. care, everyone. Thanks for all watching. Right. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching.